All of this effort so far has been to prepare the data, to put it into the database. We're finally then now going to use our FN uh, save comic um, function to save into the database. Before that, let's go to the web browser and let's go back to pouchdb.com. The, the thing with pouch is that every action... Oh, yes, question. Why can't we have just the number of the counter We can do that as well. We can have like a random number or some kind of counter that will always be unique. That's another way to do it. Yes. Uh, I'm sort of going to do that a little bit later because we might run into that issue that a person is trying to save the exact same comic two times on accident. So uh, I am going to cover that, and we are going to kind of think about using uh, that kind of way. Yeah. So with Pouch, um, everything that we do is either going to result in a successful operation or a failed operation. We either will successfully save to the database, or it will fail in saving to the database. You have those two options, pretty much. Let's look at it right over here. Let's go to Guides. And let's go into uh, working with databases on the left. Guides, then working with databases. No, uh, working with documents, I mean. Working with documents. So we can read about this that it's a uh, NoSQL database, it uses JSON data, etc. Okay, we've seen that. We can have more complex data if we want. Um, We've seen this, so scroll down. Storing a document. Okay, so it's basically db.put. We saw that before in our very first intro to Pouch. Then we saw, okay, db.get. Get a particular record based on its ID. Uh, we will look <coughs> at also revisions. When we uh, change a comic we need to have a new revision, a new version of the data. We'll get to that. Uh, and we see there, it's, it's, there's, we have the dot .put, dot .get, but we don't exactly have dot .update. Not quite, so we'll, we'll see how that works. So um, this documentation here in the, um, in the general guides is a good like uh, quick overview of these different ideas. You'll often spend a little more time in the in the deeper documentation over here under API. Let's go to API. Here then, it breaks it down into further and deeper topics related to the database. And this database, like every other database, has the common actions of create a database, delete a database, store something in the database, retrieve something from the database, update something from the database. Those five actions are common on all databases. Save, retrieve, update, delete. Uh, we just need the right command. So looking at our documentation here, which is one big, big, big document, but there's chapters on the left. Uh, the one we care about at the moment that we're working with, create or update a document. Create or put data into the database. Put a document into the database. So jump to the create a doc. So again, db.put. And the syntax of the documentation, which is uh, common throughout a lot of documentation, is that, OK, we've got the generic way that we write this. And then we have options in brackets. So you can add optional options when you store data to the database. And you can have optionally a callback function, a result of uh, putting data into the database, or trying to put data into the database. In the syntax is, whatever is the name of your database, dot put. You need to put the data that you're putting into the database, obviously, comma. Then you may have options, comma. Then you may have a callback function. So. Down here on the example, 
There are three different ways to write our PouchDB code, or most modern JavaScript. There's like three flavors. The default mentions promises. Let's switch it over to callbacks, which is what we've got experience with already. Promises, if you want to re be really cutting edge in JavaScript, promises is probably what you want to learn eventually. It's like the most cutting edge version of how to uh, do some of these actions in JavaScript. Uh, this is one of my to-dos when I've got the time. Hey, I just had spring break. I should have done it then. But this is one of the things that I should also uh, improve my skills on with promises. Uh, we're going to use callbacks because this is what we've already had experience in. And then asynchronous is another sort of flavor. So in any of this documentation, I would recommend to first switch over to callbacks. The syntax will be different. They will both accomplish the same thing. But I'm going to be uh, teaching this via callbacks. So now if we look at the full detail here, db.put, there's our first parameter, comma, uh, our, our uh, second parameter of uh, the callback options were omitted. We can look at another one over here with um, with options. Let's see, did they do one with options? Um, are they skipping options? Okay, that's fine. So our very first one here. We've got our data that we're going to save to the database. Here they're storing it in the raw. JSON format. They're putting the whole curly braces, IDs, quotes, and all of that, comma, function, uh, with some sort of error or some sort of positive response. Now, I, I wish they would kind of name these, uh, these values a little bit more obviously, the way I'm going to show you here. But what this is always going to be is you're trying to put data to the database and you will either get an error comma or a success they should have called it error and success but you'll always get in this order either an error or a success curly braces for that anonymous function which then ends the whole parentheses of put all of this is part of put then we can write some what we've had experience in, if there's an error, do the following, or else there's a success, do the following. So pretty much all of these will have that sort of result uh, in terms of, let's say, db.get. I'm trying to get data from the database. Here's an example. I want to try to get something from my database with this unique ID. I will have a result of either an error or a success. Here they called it doc. So I wish they were a little bit more consistent, because it's error and success. They're calling it doc here. The document came back. I guess that's what they mean. You have either an error or a success. If you have an error, deal with the error. If you have or else success, deal with success. So pretty much everything here. OK, I'm going to delete data from the database. From the database, I'm going to remove a particular document, a result is either an error or a success. And here they call it response, error, success. If there is an error, deal with the error, or else there's a success, deal with the success. So I'm just saying that this is what Pouch is pretty much with all of these kinds of commands. You're pretty much going to try to do something and get some sort of error or success. The syntax is very uh, um, consistent. So all the official documentation is here. I would, uh, I would read it. If you have nothing better to do, uh, read it here. Did anyone take any time uh, during spring break to read any documentation or practice any coding? No? OK, ten, minus 10 points for everyone. Plus 5 points for you, Diana. Okay, so let's try this in action back to the code. Let's get into our function save comic.
in my case line 307 executes or runs the prep comic and that's why we were seeing output in the console before the beginning of that line let's write var a comic equals function prep comic run the function prep comic function it returns a bundle of data which we can use in this function function save comic so remember the last command in function prep comic is return temp comic it returns the bundle of data we put together up here and this is interesting this is cool if you hover over that object, it breaks it down for you, and this is exactly what it's made of. I like that. So if I think, well, that's just a plain old variable. Oh, it's actually an object full of these pieces of data, these properties and these values. So all of these will, are bundled together into one object, one variable. Here we're saying, OK, start to run this function, create a new variable to hold a comic that we're working with that comes from running the function which then checks the input fields checks the first word blah 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 all of that and stores it here in a comic let's say console log up until this time uh, we've been putting all of this console output I think a little too simply we're, we're gonna start to do our console a little bit smarter in terms of doing it like this comic to be saved is space plus a comic. All of the console we've been doing has just been the raw data. Here's what you just did with kind of no context. And when we work with really complex ideas and, and functions, what, is, what I just forgot. I'm, I'm so frazzled. It's it's two in the morning. I've been working on my code. I'm I'm crashing from all that Red Bull. What is this console doing again? I have to run it again. Well, if you give yourself messages in the console here, comic to be saved is. Hopefully, then you're telling yourself what you're about to do. All of this other simple like console log temp comic. I forgot what what is that? Show me over here. Console log whatever like what am I showing myself so it's a little smarter to give yourself a, a note plus what the data is just to see that's to see if that's okay save it and run it nothing really big is happening just yet but make sure you see this message in the console. Comic to be saved is in whatever comic you're inputting. So I recommend once in a while clearing your console out here. Remember, you can press the little clear console, this little uh, X thing. And that way you have uh, something clean to look at, save. So I'm getting all of this output that I've had from before. Now when I see it just like that, IRO, what, what does that mean again? Okay, and then over here, comic to be saved is, we're about to save this object, this data, right over here. So we're about to save an object into the database. Then it's simply the put command, next line, db.put. 
We're putting a comic. So as we saw in the documentation a moment ago, put expects the data you're about to put. You can put it either as the raw JSON data, not too smart. We're instead doing it better in that we have all of the data bundled as one object. That's what we're putting into our database. Comma, space. The result is a callback function. So make sure you've got these curly braces and parentheses here. We're trying to put data and there will be a, an, an error or success. There is a function that executes after trying to put this data into that database. Our documentation, remember we had error, comma, uh, result, whatever they called it. We are going to use failure comma success. I believe the word error might be reserved in JavaScript. So we're using failure. They called it error and um, result or something, whatever they call it. You can call this whatever you want. You can call it cat and dog. That's fine. You can call this whatever you want, but that doesn't make sense. So what makes sense is failure and success. So there was either a failure or a success. We're going to break these curly braces apart here because we're going to have some steps that result after. We're going to have more commands that execute on the result of either a failure or a success. So I'm going to break these curly braces like this. You might want to add a note here. And dot put. Okay, so either we have a failure in putting the data into the database, or we have a success. Either or. That sounds like an if-else statement in JavaScript. If else. And if else trying to put the data into the database. We have those two conditions, failure or success. A plain old if else would work. And if you know the, you know the what's it called, shortcuts or short circuiting? Is it called short circuiting? You can short circuit your if statement if you know how to do that. Save yourself a little typing. We have two options, either failure or success trying to save to the database. So a plain old if else with you know two possibilities should be good enough. We're going to check if failure. If there was a failure, if pouch, if after trying to put data, pouch said, no nope, failure, let's deal with that. Or else pouch said, yep, yeah, success, we deal with that. For the moment, we'll say failed to save comic. And then what, what is that message it's trying to give me? There's going to be a message built into this response object. If there was a failure from Pouch, I want to see it in the console. Tell me what it was. Or else there was a success. So the opposite here console log, we saved the comic plus success. Show me what success message pouch is giving back to me. This is inside of else. Saved comic. 
success. Go ahead and save it and run it. Try to save a comic, and now we're st we're finally putting stuff into the database. We're finally putting finally putting data into the database. We should be getting some feedback too. Uh, now remember, it might be useful to check your error list before we're actually running it, uh, just in case. You might want to check your errors down here, just in case, uh, and then run it, and then F12, and check that, and see if you get one of those results. Uh, and, and notice, uh, it's just for aesthetics, but notice I'm putting a space. My message, space, then their, their, their message. If you don't put the space, the words will be run together and it's just the console, doesn't matter. But for readability, if you put a space there, it'll write that message plus the space plus their message. So see what happens. So I'll open my console right away. I'll clear my console. I'll save. I'm going to save a comic. Save. Comic to be saved is the comic. It then triggered saved comic. There's an object saved to the database. <coughs> Let's say I'm putting Superman number two. Save. Saved comic. Superman number three. Save comic. If you want to then fully see that it's working, you can go to your application uh, panel or tab in Chrome. Remember we've got our database inside of storage, index DB, pouch. I'm, per I'm logged in right now with this user so I've got that database. Open that up. Look at it by sequence. This is the data in the database so far. I am saving data internally to my app, to my device, my data by sequence. I've got three comics saved so far, Superman 1, 2, 3. I can further open that up to see the details. Alphabetically, so those fields are alphabetized. There's the data, my notes, my number. There's the year. Here's the ID and the revision. Underscore ID is right there. SCP one one nine eight eight colon one dash whatever unique ID. Superman number two. Pause right there. Anyone need a little help? Are you seeing the data in your database? Okay, let's let me put that back right here.
All right, so here we saved. Um, we were trying to put data into the database. What happens is you get uh, you get an object that comes back of either failure or success. It looks kind of uh, not too helpful when you do that. Let me just run that one more time. But this is commonly what happens with objects um, from callbacks. So let me show you what I mean here. Uh, so I'm going to say one more comic. Let's just say just spare <coughs> number one. Save. So all I'm getting out of the uh, console at the moment is this. Okay, the comic to be saved is some object, and I've saved an, I've saved a comic, and there's some object. Well, what's happening here is depending on the library or the framework, um, you have different ways to actually see what that object is. Over here on the uh, pouch. Uh, on the pouch um, documentation, we're we're seeing, for example, creating uh, when trying to save uh, data. Again, oh, let me go back to put. Right, that one's good. Okay, put. So we're trying to put data to the database, and there's some sort of object, either error or or success, failure or success, as we're calling it. Uh, well, what's happening? is then uh, there are there are fields in the response. There's an OK field, an ID field, a revision field. So out of curiosity, what you can do here is use, use the fields that are defined in the project, ID, rev, and OK. <coughs> so what that means is for success, we have dot rev. Let me just double check if it's rev or underscore rev. This is showing the what what revision, what version number of the data is this? So let me just see if it's with with or without the underscore. Saving. Again, at a certain point, you're you're going to stop caring to write real data here. That's fine just like me. But here it is, yeah. Okay, so um, the documentation shows that possible properties of what's in a success are the ones listed right here. There is an OK property, there is an ID property, there is a rev property. So you saw what, we just, what I wrote here. Uh, I saved a comic. I'm saying, OK, there's that object of successfully saving. Give me then the property of that object called rev. So it just simply gives me a big old gibberish number. I could put ID. What is the ID of the comic I just saved? Or we have one called 
OK. So success.ok, if I successfully save, it should say saved comic, true. There's an object. This object has the property of OK. And how do I know that? Again, the documentation is telling me, sometimes a little obtuse. But there's an OK, there's an ID, there's a rev. And that's what I just saw right here when I used rev. Saved comic, and there's the revision. First version of the data with the unique identifier. I'm going to save another comic. I'm going to save the good old comic number 123, issue 123 from 1922. Save that. It says, OK. We saved the comic. It was that one, and notice how it has a completely unique revision number there. And we can see in the application screen, you might have to refresh by sequence. Uh, by rev, I wouldn't worry about rev yet here. By sequence, this is what I've been saving so far. So, so far I've saved Superman number 123, Spider number 1, 111 number 111, 123 number 123. Sequentially, this is the, the data I've been saving in order which I, I will of course be able to extract in any order and filter and all of that. We'll get to that later. We're still, we're still simply saving data to the database. And uh, I've already saved Superman number one. Uh, have any of you tried to save the exact same comic more than once? Have anyone tried to think outside the box? Okay, uh, what did I do? 1988. So I'm going to try to save the exact same comic. I'm going to clear the console. Save. Failed to save comic. Output, status property, name property, message property. Here it gave me the whole object. What's happening in our code? Console, fail to save comic, object. In this case, all of the properties of that object. I can read about it in the documentation. Or, in this case, it showed me status property, name property, message property. Logically, failure.message should then only output the message within that object. So I'm trying to save the same comic at the moment that's in error. You might think, well, I want to save the same comic because I misspelled it, or I want to add an extra note. Okay, so Superman, number one, 1988. We know I've saved that. If I try to save again, fail to save comic, document update conflict. So my feedback that, it's, that Pouch is giving me is, it seems that you're trying to update a comic that already exists. No, I thought I was going to save it. I didn't remember I already had Superman number one. But the result there is one of the possible uh, errors, which are listed here in the documentation. <coughs> somewhere. But you see simply failure is an object, a JSON object, that Pouch is giving back to me. We created the JSON object of the bundle of data, and Pouch is talking back to us in JSON format. You see that? This is JSON format. The response is in JSON format. And when we had our assessment, we worked with JSON data. And like I said, you're going to see that a lot, JSON formatted data, the syntax of JSON, you're going to see that a lot in every other sort of kind of <clears throat> interface or API and such. Here it is with, oh, here it is. So uh, these responses come from uh, some errors. We get status, we get name, message, error. So a moment ago, I did. Um, failure.message, it simply said document update conflict. If I do uh, failure.status, it'll say 409. And there's a list of numbers of what possible errors exist in Pouch. So 
here. Just to show it again, I'm going to save the exact same, try to save the exact same comic. So again, it's telling me I, I got into the if portion of there was a failure, and I wrote the message failed to save comic. And then the uh, object, status, name, message, properties. If this was a different year, save success. Because up here, I already have SUP1-1988. That's why there's a conflict. There's already something in my database with that unique ID. That's what this whole error is trying to say. I don't have anything in my database of SUP1-1940, so it saved it fine. If I try to resave the exact same comic, save I got the error well if I fully fill this out here will I get an error or a success it's different data hmm? error still because the ID is based on these three fields title number year so even though I filled in the other fields it's still an error because the unique thing is the ID uh, we'll cover uh, doing updates, of course, because what if I had saved Superman 1, 1940, but I didn't save Publisher, and I didn't save a note. Well, I'm trying to save now Publisher and note. This is not the way to go about it yet. So that's why it's saying uh, there's a failure, uh, document update conflict. OK, no problem. I'm going to save Superboy number 1 from 1999. How do you spell deb debut? I suddenly forgot how to spell debut. No E? Yeah. Save. So, uh, SUP1-1999 didn't exist in the database yet. Saved comic. True. Now you can see in the application. By sequence, that's what I've got. You can kind of look at your data in different ways, but I think the most useful is by sequence. By revision, we'll look at that eventually, which is what versions of the data in my database. We're not there yet. Blob support, document store. Document store is another way to look at it. It shows it this way by the key value, alphabetically by key, by the ID, I mean. So here is SUP number 1, 1940. SUP number 1, 1988, SUP 1, 1999, the comic that I called 111, there it is. So another way to look at it is via document store. And you can open these up and see the data. Deleted or local, um, these are going to tell you if these have been deleted or not. It'll keep track of also if you've deleted the data. So it stores all of that. So in a sense that you have a way to also undo. Uh, someone deleted the comic. Whoops, I didn't mean that. You can undo it because it stores everything about your data. Meta store, attach sequence, sequence. Yeah, so by sequence is probably going to be the best way to view the data internally. Of course, we'll set up a way that, hey, we have a whole screen here, view comic. This is for the people to view it. We're in the developer mode. No one's ever going to see that. We need to eventually set up a way to view our data, to let the user view our data. We're still dealing with saving our data. So um, questions so far? Let's, um, yes. Let me see if I, if I get what you're saying. So, um, as, accessing different databases? Basically. Um, 
yes and no. Um, in theory, we could have this currently logged in user, which is a at a.com. We could possibly view the data from a different user if we program it to do that. Right now, this database is linked to this user that logged in because of their email. Uh, we could be able to look at a completely different database with a different user, sure, if we program it to do that. Um, what was that the, the question? I think my question is if you still think the maybe tag as well. I'm just trying to see the possibility of creating uh, two different uh, governments within the same data. But I don't know if you call it the user. But is it two documents with the exact same data? Yeah, then one of the objects will be uh, yes, uh, maybe you're thinking a little bit more in like a classic relational database. Um, but uh, we, we technically, this style of database, which is very common nowadays, is a NoSQL style. So there is technically no relation that way, in that there's a a table key related to another table key. There is there is that is not the forte of this kind of database, which is. Uh, common in web databases. You could work around it with more effort, and there are plugins to kind of fill in those features, but the way we have the default pouch implementation at the moment, it's not quite that easy to do. But there is a way to have one object reference another object. All of these are objects, so we could have a way for this object to reference another object, but this kind of database doesn't try to do that because for the purposes of what this kind of database does, it doesn't quite need it. Mm -hmm. And the style of these NoSQL databases don't need that. Let's um, take a break here. I'm going to share my code at this point. And uh, after the break, we're, we're going to deal with, we're, we're putting data into the database, but we, we need to deal with all of these possibilities of errors and such. Um, what if I'm trying to put the same comic book twice? Let's deal with some <clears throat> error issues. Uh, what if I uh, didn't fill in a field? Let's deal with that. Uh, and then we'll deal with the third case about what if there is a comic that has almost the exact same name and year? Um, how to deal with that. That's when we'll deal with uh, one more way to add a, a unique random number to, to the data. So, um, you know, I've already saved Superman number 1, 1988, but what if there was a Superboy number 1, 1988? Well, both of those are going to have the same root of SUP. Error. They both have SUP. Okay, so in that case, right after the break, we'll see, well, okay, if all else fails, we'll add a little bit of random numbers to make sure we've got a completely unique ID. So let's take a break. It's 8.15-ish. Uh, we'll take a break until 8.25. I'll put my code into the network folder, and then we'll come back in 10 minutes.